Okay, so we have the volume part of this question placed to one side. Let's have a look at what they're asking for us. Next. Units, sir. Uh, no. Oh, it's a volume. Now, interesting. Mm. Units. Yeah, I suppose so. Well, okay. Um, they're actually going to give us units in a second. Um, interestingly. Th this, this you'll, you'll notice, no units have been provided yet. And they provide it sort of, yeah, right at the end, like right at the very end of the question. So at the moment, I'm happy, I'm content to just leave this as an expression, right? Because it's an integral. So as an integral by itself, it doesn't need to have units attached to it. And I'll bring the units in as I require them, okay? So the cap represents a shallow puddle of water left after some rain, like last night. When the sun comes out, the water evaporates at a rate proportional to its surface area. Just hold on for a second. What does that mean? Okay. So if I have a lot of water in here, okay, all of the parts that's uh, where the water is actually you know, escaping out into the air is from this surface, right? Like this. The bigger the surface area, the more places there are. <laughs> Here's my, you know, betraying how little I know about science. There's more places for the water to escape off of. There's a lot more places for the wind to blow past, etc. You can imagine, obviously, if, say, my shape were, like, upside down, or even if it was something simple like, say, a, um, a cylinder. Okay. When you have a look at the water that's in there, if I, if I put in a, a, an amount of water in there, in this container here, the surface area is going to always be the same, right? As this gets lower and lower and lower, the surface area will always be the same. So this is going to evaporate at a constant rate. But this is not, <laughs> is it, right? As this gets lower and lower and lower, there's less surface area, so there's less um, space for it to evaporate from. So this rate of change is going to be variable, yeah? And that's what makes this an interesting question. So just keep that in your head for a second. And now let's have a look at um, how to actually get towards this expression. So part I, for part B, or part 1 I should say, is well what is the surface area? So where is the surface area on our diagram, on here? Unfortunately the surface area is not on this diagram, right? Because what we did was we, we made it flat so we could work out all of this algebra stuff. So that's why you need this diagram, right? Does that make sense? So I'm going to get rid of these arrows now, which is not very helpful. The surface area is just this, um, just the circle on top, yeah? So I'm going to put on I'm going to put it in this not very straight line, right? And I want to work out what that is. That's the radius, okay? The radius is obviously the single piece of information I need for that surface area. Can't we still use a 2D diagram to determine the radius? Yes, we will. In fact, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Um, the 2D diagram has information on it, which is what I'm going to use. So you can see this R, right, corresponds to this distance in here. There's R. Right? And I like having both of these diagrams beside each other because they mutually inform each other. So how do I find what R is on this diagram? What am I going to use? Yeah. So you substitute h, negative h squared into the y because the x coordinate of the uh, point of the circle. Okay. And then they calculate So approach number one I could take is this distance here is the same as the x coordinate of that spot. Do you agree? That could work. I could put in negative h into the equation in the circle and it would give me a number. It would work, but I think there's a simpler way, isn't there? Yeah. I have a right angle triangle here. There he is, right? And I know everything I need to know about this right angle triangle. It's the hypotenuse is the radius of this circle. So it must be equal to 4. Um, we start off just by defining that as h, right? So I would, of course, get the same expression. But all I need to say is, in this triangle, um, r squared plus h squared equals 4 squared. Do you agree? Come in. Come in. Take a seat. Uh, of course, the reason for this is Pythagoras assumes. So I'm going to say that. So what did I want? What did I want? I wanted R, uh, so I'll put R squared first, like so. Um, so I have this. Yeah? What do you think? Now, I, I will point out, um, you know, the suggestion we had before of we'll put it into this equation is going to give you exactly that. Like, it's just the x-coordinate that I want. It's the same thing. It's the same equation. You see that? Uh, as it happens, I don't actually need R. I, don't, I, didn't, I didn't need R, right? And this is one of those helpful times where it's important you recognize 
Like, you know when we say, oh, simplify, right? And early on in your mathematical career, simplify is just whatever the, the teacher told you to do, right? But as we go further, it's like, well, simplify means just get it into whatever form I want it to be to do the next thing. What was the next thing? Why are we working with R in the first place? Yeah, I actually wanted an area, right? Which I don't need R for. R squared is just fine, yeah? So I'm actually going to rewind a line, and I'm just going to say, well, what I'm actually working out is this surface area. Um, of course, it's a circle, which is just pi R squared. So that area I'm after is this. Yeah? Eight times? 